All right, let, let me take you into politics. I'd like to ask you, are you running for president? As you know, the last few weeks, my, I've been going around with the advocacy group, consulting with all the parts with the party members. We've been around the North Central, been around the Northwest, uh, going around Southeast, uh, Southwest and Northeast very soon, communicating my interest to contest for presidency. But like anybody, when their rules, their guidelines, we're having a, a neck meeting on Tuesday, hopefully, which I'm sure the guidelines will come out, which will tell us definitely whether, as like, like any football match, the whistle will be blown. Uh, short of anything there that stops an individual, I will definitely be announcing sometime before the end of the month my intention to vie for, for president. At the moment, we're, we're, we're just doing consultation. For my, declaration will come in due course. So there's a strong possibility for you to run for the number one office? Yeah, there is a strong possibility. For, for I've been asked this question severally. Yeah. Uh, you are Senator Abubakar Bukala Saraki. Yeah. Is uh, Bukala Saraki a Yoruba man or a northerner or a southwesterner? Uh, a lot I, of people uh, seem to be very confused and I understand their confusion. Kwara's not central. You know the reason why I'm asking? Because in Nigeria's politics, people will ask the question, who are you? Where, which tribe do you belong? It's a wrong narrative to have in our politics, ethnicity and tribalism and all of that, but it's something that has shaped our politics and we cannot run away from it. For tonight, are you Bukala Saraki or Abubakar Saraki? I mean, when I say Abubakar Saraki, you know what I mean. I'm a Nigerian. I'm a Nigerian for, for today's, for all Nigerians. I believe I, I, a lot of us in politics, we spend our time on these kind of conversations. But you know the real conversation today is the insecurity. The unemployment in a lot of our youth, 50 50%. Cost of living, those are the conversations. And, and when I've, 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 I've been doing a lot of polling, talking to young people, you know what they tell us? That's what concerns us. For me, for this purpose, it's about being a Nigerian. It doesn't if, matter where you come from. I, I believe that what matters now, where we are today as a nation, that is what is important. Because that question will be raised it when will, the it, issue it, of it, rotation comes. Let's, let's where uh, you come from, they will be, that they will be subjected. I mean, that, we, that conversation must be had. Uh, let's, let's, talk about that. let's talk about that. Because you talk, people talk a lot about zoning. I don't, I'm not saying that zoning is not a criteria that must be considered when you talk about where power comes from. No, 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 I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that in 2023, zoning and, and other issues must be considered. You see, in 1999, when the issue of zoning came in, if you could recollect, there were in political imbalances, particularly coming out of June 12, 1993, that needed to be addressed. Some of those imbalances still exist, don't get me wrong. But today, as a nation, the challenge that we have is a defining moment in our history where aside from where you come from, what also really matters today is how we're going to prevent our country. Some have been harsh to us and say that Nigeria is close to a failed state. We're not a failed state, but we're inching towards a failing state if we don't do the right thing. And those right things requires reform. We need to turn this country around. If you sample the polling was only 86% of Nigerians saying the country is going in the right direction. We must address this issue. So as we address the issue of where you come from, we must also put that energy and address who and what kind of leadership do we need now. So for when you, you, when you let, me, let me finish. When you talk about reforming a country, you need leadership that has vision. You need leadership that has knowledge. And more importantly as well, you need leadership that has courage. Because there are decisions that need to be taken that needs courageous leadership. And then you need leadership that can follow through the implementation of some of those issues. That is as important as some of the issues of zoning. And even when you talk about zoning, in our, in our political party, for example, PDP, if you look at over since 1999, since 1999, out of the, out of the number of uh, 16 years that we've, PDP has had, 14 years of that has been in the south, two years in the north. But even leave PDP, look at the nation. At the end of 2023, we'll have had 24 years. Of that 24 years, 14 years of that, 
is in the south. Ten years of that is in the north. So even if, you, even if the presidency goes to the north in 2023, at the end of 2027, you've got four. So you don't even have a skewed imbalance. So my, my take is that every time in, 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 the, in the nation's history, you look at the issues that, 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 that are challenging us at that time. Yes, zoning is an issue, but more importantly, along with that, there are also issues that are as, as important as zoning, and they must be looked together. People so, will also talk about the issue of competencies. That's why I, I told mean, whether when, or not you have the capacity, you've been a former Senate president. And people will actually put it on a scale. When you were Senate president, what did you do? Yeah. Capacity, when you were a, a governor of Colorado State, what did you do? If people put those on the scale, yeah. would you say that you are fit to become Nigeria's president? Sure, I believe that I, am, I have what it takes to lead this country. As I said to you, that what this country requires now is, is a leader that knows what are the issues and a leader that is bold and courageous and that can stand. I think my, my past history has shown that I'm not somebody who shy away taking up challenges. I'm not someone who does not know the issues. And I'm not someone who does not have the energy and vibrancy to address those issues. More importantly, these are things that I've been able to do. I'm somebody that can reach out across the political divide based on my antecedents. I'm somebody who can reach across the ethnicity divide. And I'm someone who can reach across the religious divide. You need those to unite this country today.